happens in that in that world when things just start wildly switching and again like i i genuinely think that the hires that you're seeing and how they're doing stuff even the tna stuff like what happens with like with joe hendry like they're I'm gonna pay up. <laughs> yeah I, i'm good so you're gonna do it they're like gonna what? pay a they're gonna pay a for they are gonna pay a fortune for that guy yeah because, yeah. Uh, because yeah. not just because he's awesome because he's awesome but they're gonna pay a fortune for him because he has the favorables he has the yeah. data behind him and the data is more important than anything else to a company like Netflix. Like that's what they care about. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that up because we're going to transition to it. Oh, uh, sorry, JD, we're all out of time. No, oh, 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 I was getting ready to take my victory lap. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll set you up, JD. Don't worry about it. Uh, NXTNA, their partnership has uh, strengthened uh, quite a bit. In fact, um, Joe Hendry in the main event, and they were teasing him throughout the show. Everybody knew Joe Hendry was going to be in that main event. Uh, NXT actually outperformed uh, AEW in the demo this week, which is pretty wild. They buy by a fraction of a point, but they still they still beat them. So credit where it's due. They were able to get them in the demo rating this week, um, and I think Joe Hendry and I think the TNA relationship is a part of that because I think Joe Hendry right now is one of the most like up and coming over guys in professional wrestling, uh, and it's only a matter of time before WWE plucks him away from TNA. We just want his contracts up. Or if TNA decides to let him out of his contract early, which appears to have happened with one Jordan Grace. All right, J.D., go ahead. I told you so. <laughs> we we speculated. You, uh, we talked about this ooh, months ago now. Yeah. You talked about, you were like, hey, Jordan Grace is under contract till 2026. And I said, unless WWE gets her out of it. And you, you were adamant because your blood runs with TNA. I'm sorry, my friend. You <laughs> you are so a TNA guy at heart. Well, ha you, half of their roster blocks me because of how mean I am to them, so I don't know that that's the case. But I, yeah, Me too. Yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> just as guilty as that. This is why I'm not on Brace for Impact anymore. Like, but here we are. Like, it was very obvious they are interested in Jordan Grace, and their word is they're going to let her out of the contract a little bit early, and she'll transition over to WWE, which makes perfect sense because she's right now the best woman involved in nxt might be yeah. one of the best women in the main roster when she gets there jordan's awesome and uh you had a great tweet this week so i buried you and i'm going to give you some credit oh, when well, you said you. that no problem when you said that tna is more over in nxt than it is in tna yeah yeah That's well great. you know T, T, nxt loves everything and and i that's why the, and that's why this relationship is working way better than anything that TNA has done before. Now I know that the AEW thing happened and they got Kenny Omega and they popped numbers early on, but this is a more of a mutually beneficial relationship oh, 100%. and both fan bases are into it. The mm -hmm. AEW TNA thing, when they were together, like AEW wanted nothing to do with TNA and TNA fans had a ton of resentment for AEW accomplishing stuff that TNA was never able to accomplish. So they just didn't click. And also Tony Khan didn't help matters much when he came onto the air on TNA's television show and completely buried them week after week. And and then the, TNA never got the payoff, which I blame Scott Demora. That's Scott Demora's fault. Uh, he, he got cuckolded in his own promotion. That's his fault. I don't blame Tony Khan there. But um, the, the fan base the fan bases didn't jive. AEW snubbed their nose. They were looking down at TNA all the time. Well, that's not happening with this NXT thing. So NXT fans are really excited about TNA coming over to NXT. And anytime a TNA star comes onto that program, the, the TNA chants are extremely loud. Now, WWE cheats a little bit. Um, not every person in, in, in the audience during NXT is an actual fan. They're, they're, they're wrestlers training, right? And they're, they're, right. Being told, they're being told what to say. And I, I get the feeling they might be piping a little bit of crowd noise. But it sounds pretty awesome. And they do, they do a great job. Um, so that, that's exactly why I said that. But... What I will say is on the TNA show since Chicago, since the Chicago shows from a few weeks ago, and that's carried over into Philadelphia, as a result of this NXT relationship, they're, they're sold out, right? They actually sold more tickets in Chicago for Against All Odds a couple weeks ago than they did for Bound for Glory last year that featured Will Ospreay. They actually pushed the building capacity to 1,200. They oversold the building, uh, which they've never been able to do before. So let's just say that the, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. But it's going to happen where WWE is going to want those TNA stars as they see how over they are on TNA programming. First, the first domino to fall is Jordan Grace, and it's only a matter of time before they take Joe Hendry too. And you know what? You got to all you can do is be like, you know what? I'm happy for him. <laughs> it's like because I think Joe Hendry is going to be a multimillionaire. 
Oh, he's fit. He fits so perfectly into what yeah. they do. Uh, I'm getting 84 flashbacks when I when I look at what's happening in TNA. Like they're just gonna. They, how are they not gonna take what they want? And then what is TNA left with? Because they don't have. It's, they don't really have a pipeline. It's you know? AEW New Japan. A, you know, it's yeah. a, a, it's WWE TNA. Look, AEW and WWE are in a war, right? And they they need to constantly refresh their roster. And so, as if you're a smaller company or you're a regional company. And your stars start to get hot and their contracts are due. The top two companies are going to bid for them and they're going to take them. That's and wrestling. with TNA and WWE being a partnership, they can do that in a more smooth fashion than what WWE used to do to them, which is just pluck them out. And I'll, and, they, and they legitimately poached TNA. And oh, I have, yeah. I have a, a specific example, Karrion Cross, Killer Cross. What they what they did with Killer Cross is they, they – Killer Cross knew he had an NXT deal waiting for him when he was working for Impact. And so that dude went to the sheets, went to the media, did everything he could to get out of his TNA contract because he knew he had that deal on the back end. And he was bad mouthing the company, said everything under the sun that he could say. And and they let, they made him sit home for six months. They eventually let him out of his contract. And day one, he was in NXT. That's called poaching. That is a poaching maneuver right there. But now, you know, WWE probably gave him a little TNA a little something on the back end. Like, hey, we really want Jordan. You know, she's outgrowing your company. She's been there for six or seven years. She's won that title too many times. She's headlined pay-per-views. She ain't got nothing else to do there anymore. We're gonna take her. Let's 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 work out a deal here. And I think that's what happened with them. I mean, she feels she feels out of place there. Like when I watch, I don't like I'm not I'm not a super loyal TNA fan. Um, like TNA is my is in my, is in my like dead zone of fandom um, almost entirely. Like I just missed it. Like it existed during the window when I didn't watch, so I don't know it. But you know, I've been watching it the past few months and um, I feel like she just feels, she feels out of place. Like she's, she feels like a WWE superstar. She's a Ferrari in a trailer park right now. Yeah. And so it sort of makes sense that she's going to go. And I think like Joe Hendry, it's funny to watch Joe Hendry between the two shows, the, the production value of NXT makes him look like the superstar that he is and yeah. you see it and it's like i wit what i wish and th- again this is the producer in me watching it is like what tna if tna was smart what they would be taking out of this deal is not the talent right because they're not getting yeah. the a-list talent from nxt right they're just sort of getting whoever's kind of around they they, they got uh, they're getting the no quarter catch crew which yeah decent enough yeah. talent but they're not being named right what they should be taking is the production know-how because those TV, like NXT for being made in essentially the same space, right? Like they're being made in rooms that are the same size. They're being made on roughly the same budget. It's probably maybe a little bit more, but it's technically it's probably a little bit less because it's a standing set. So they don't have to build it every time, but like, they're they're essentially putting on the same shows right like they're putting on virtually the same shows but the quality of the show just the actual physical production of an AEW of a sorry of a wwe nxt show is so slick and so good and looks Mm. like a show um i i just rely on my wife for everything like we were watching it tonight my wife was like what what is wrong like what looks wrong with the show and all I can say is like, well, it's TNA. <laughs> like this is what TNA looks. This is what TNA yeah. looks like. Yeah, T- well, T- TNA is in the ECW arena tonight, and uh, yeah. it was a packed house. I, I think I think the video production. I'll be honest. If you watched the show three months ago, you would say that the show this week looked way better than it did three months ago because they fired. Yeah, no, it, it does. They, they fired their director Dave Sahadi. They sent his ass to MLW. They hired a new director, and like they're actually white balancing the cameras. The audio. That's what I was gonna say. Are we white balancing? It, are we it's, white it's, balancing finally? Yeah, yeah, they, they are. They're color correcting, and the 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 video is clear. And uh, some of the movie shots that they're doing backstage look way better than they did three months ago. So they have made some they have made some improvements. And B, uh, my buddy BQ, who does a TNA podcast, said they need to work really hard to look more like NXT and less like MLW. And they're inching their way to that. Um, NXT has the advantage. They got WWE right behind them, but. It also is that they're on a soundstage essentially there on the PC, which yeah. is what TNA is trying to get to later this year with the the rumored 
move to Full Sail University. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, if I didn't hit my bit. Um, nobody nobody comments on my hairline. Hold on. Oh, here we go. All right. Now I got my tinfoil hat on, gentlemen, <laughs> and um, I wanted I wanted JD. <laughs> I got my I got my tinfoil hat on. I have a conspiracy. And, uh, and you guys are going to want to hear this. I, I think this whole WWE TNA thing, because they put over Joe Hendry huge last night. I have never seen WWE, even when they worked with ECW in the past, they never put a, a, a smaller company star in the main event of their television show and had him get the victory and put him in a position to look, look more like a star than their top star on that show. Joe Hendry came off like a bigger star than Trick Williams on Trick Williams' own show. Right? He absolutely did. And he got yeah. and he got the pin over the legendary Sean Spears. All right, okay. but he, he got the pin over he got the pin over Sean Spears. I think WWE is trying to build up TNA to try to take away from AEW's audience. I I, I absolutely think that's happening. I, I there there is no reason for them to try to build up build up TNA the way that they're doing to put over their stars the way they're. I know they're eventually going to take over. They're going to take Joe Hendry. I don't think they're taking Trey Miguel and Zach Wentz who were also on the show last night. I don't think they're taking those guys. They already had Zach Wentz at one point, and they fired him. Um, I, you know, and, and I think there's more stars coming from TNA. And they're being announced from TNA. They're promoting TNA. I, I think this is a. I think this is a big game to try to take away from AEW. I okay. I'll play. I'll play ball with you a little bit. I would. I would. Work. Are you trying you. to have a serious conversation with me wearing this hat? Is that gonna? Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, dude, I'm committed to this freaking gimmick. We are all in here. <laughs> Um, I've been wanting if, to do this for a long time, by the way. I'm very proud of you. We've been workshopping yeah. that for a long time, and it actually <laughs> came off pretty good. Um, I would be on board with you if TNA had an audience that was yeah. remarkable, rem that was remotely close to AEW's. Like, you're getting the TNA fans, and dude, believe me, this show, Josh, this show when it started it was called Brace for Impact, it was a TNA a po Impact right. podcast. Brace That's how we started out. Uh, you, Taylor you Wild, the t shirt now. You get the t-shirt out. <laughs> um, the Taylor Wilde famously broke me when she was playing with tarot cards on the on the ring apron, and I lost my mind on this podcast a couple years back. So we, we converted to what they are now. So um, if TNA had an audience, TNA's got a bigger audience now at NXT than it ever has. And it's it's not – they're not picking off AEW fans. They're adding TNA fans, which we know are remarkably loyal, yeah. right? Remarkably loyal fans. And I think they're just getting more WWE fans – interested this is their answer to a forbidden door situation right and it does make wrestling more interesting quite frankly yeah. but i don't think yeah. i don't think working with tna necessarily hurts their fan but it hurts aew at all mainly because aew fans hate tna and still do the lol tna thing <laughs> yeah they, they do i mean no so look uh, i i got two things well first of all like axs just because they're on axs that 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 hurts the theory on yes. the one hand, right? Because that thing, I mean, who has it? Uh, yeah, I like I have a lot of cable in this house. There is a lot of cable, different versions of cable, different streaming services, and I do not have AXS. Like I had to get their streaming service. But I will point out their streaming service is put out by Endeavor. There you go. Bingo. I was gonna bring that up. Thank does you. own TKO. Yeah. Um, which is a weird that is very suspicious. Um I don't know. Like it does. It it, it is like weirdly um, uh, philanthropic of WWE. Um, yeah. Not like them. It is not it, like them. Yeah. I I will I say I, I think wanna, I don't want to say that they're not getting something out of it because TNA has been a boost to NXT. But yes, go ahead. I, I think like I'll I'll I will say the reason to put Joe Hendry over is. If you spend any time on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube Shorts, on any on any of them, there is literally no way to look at wrestling content to not hear that song. Yeah, every second or third slide, <laughs> like he is the most over thing in the world. Like, forget the Wyatt Six, right? Like, who cares? Everybody has that song. It's like the like the one of the most popular. It's one of the most popular backgrounds on TikTok. Like it's everywhere. So like it makes sense to put him over because those clips are gonna go mega viral 
more than anything with trick ever will yeah. like and i like i trick is great i like think trick is real talented um but like the thing with him and the i don't know if you saw there was the clip of him and trick where they they trick goes to uh give him a fist bump and he goes to shake, shake. his hand yeah delightful but like i guarantee you more people saw that than anything trick has ever done his entire life because joe henry's in it so like the service of doing of that is worth is worth putting him over and like getting that guy to fly from scotland <laughs> to come to to come do one night and be like and we'll put you over it's like well, all right it seems like I'll do it. I'm in. So like, I think, I think there's, I think there's so much value. I think he brings specifically in like way more like Jordan Grace. I think they genuinely just like, like they see her and they're like, Oh, it's like, it's like China 2.0 or possibly 3.0. Um, you know, like she's junior China essentially. Right. Like they see her, they see her look, they see like what they can do with her. They get her as like, that's a brand we can invest in that we can do something with. I think Joe Henry, they're like, oh, no, that's a guy who's going to actually he brings value to us rather than the other way around. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a lot of why they put so much behind him. Um, well, I think yeah, Joe Henry, he has such a huge social media following. His song with uh, number one at, at one point in, in different parts of the world. I think in, like the UK, it was like number like number one for a little bit, like worldwide yeah. number six. So uh, he, he, has, he has his own brand, his own audience. I think. Um, as far as like a long lasting star, I think Jordan Grace is probably somebody that you can get behind longer term. You know, with, with Joe Henry, you wonder you wonder when the meme is gonna wear off and if he's gonna improve his wrestling skills to be a top guy. I will say his last couple matches in TNA has shown me that at least in TNA, he can be their their top star by far. Um I, I think he's just good enough in the ring to be able to do that for TNA. I, I think he has some more work to do if he's gonna ever get there. With WWE and, and we're, we're getting ready to close up shop and I just want to I'm going to do a little teaser for Brace for Impact this weekend on uh, patreon.com slash um, the Mike and JD show uh, I'll be I'll be live on on on, on our Patreon um, a former WWE executive is now the chief uh, revenue officer for Anthem Sports um, overseeing Invicta and TNA and they just got Invicta, a new television deal with CBS Sports Network. Kind of a smaller channel still, but but bigger than Access. I, th I have it here, and I, I didn't know I had it, but I have it now. Um, and he was on a podcast earlier this week, and he said that uh, he's actively working on getting TNA a new television deal and to increase their distribution because that has been one of the big barriers for them. Um, I, I think the biggest barrier has been their production quality, but obviously being on Access is uh, not doing them any favors, so if they can – Upgrade the production, upgrade the television at the same time. They could do some damage. Could they do diamond ratings? Not a fucking chance. But they can do some pretty good stuff. So um, and that's okay. Yeah, that's and that's okay. okay. Like yeah. people, people, people were hitting me up saying, "Hey, if they get if they get on CBS, could they beat uh, could they beat um, Dynamite?" I'm like, "Well, a, they're not going to get on CBS, but yeah. b, um, anybody could beat Dynamite if they're on CBS, but they're not going to get on CBS." But I, I think they could probably upgrade their channel that they're on, and uh, WWE won't be a barrier to that. They're not going to actively sabotage it the way that they did it to MLW because they just lost money in that lawsuit. So, in fact, they may even be more helpful now that they're already in business with them with uh, TNA Plus, you know, with Endeavor um, leading uh, TNA Plus. But hey, guys, we went way over, um, so we're gonna, we're going to call it a night. Josh, I want you to get your plugs out here, man, and uh, yeah, let us know where everybody can watch your show. Uh, you can go, I put out stuff like three times a week. Plus I'm doing like podcasty review things, uh, at wrestling, wrestling with story at YouTube, um, and wrestling with story on Instagram. I put out shorts and like little cut up versions of it. Um, and then you can follow me on Twitter at Josh Fialkov. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Hey guys, that is going to do it for us this week. Thank you. So uh, chat, I love you guys. I am sorry that I did not get to your to get to your uh, get to your chats tonight, but we are we are way we are way over. It's uh, way past JD's bedtime. Josh, are you on the West Coast or the East Coast? I'm on the West Coast. This is like nice oh. and early for me. I still okay, got yeah, all, yeah. I'm got a whole Hawaii, night in front so of me. Not, I'm in Hawaii, so it's like seven right now. So I'm I'm, 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 away, but. I'm a teacher in the summer, man. I'm fine. We're good. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, but <laughs> but hey, everybody, go to Patreon.com/slash the Mike and JD Show. Make sure you're give us the thumbs up. Make sure you're a subscriber, and always, as always, go and check out uh, our friend Josh. And that's going to do it for us this week. And until next week, mahalo. 
uh, uh, uh. Competition starting to get thick, it's the click, so I hope you watch your A game, A-Mate, no rain from the track when we unite and 